So when I went to college, I studied economics. And the one thing that was hammered into our brains in basically any class was that when the price of something goes up, the demand for it goes down. However, I have found an exception to this rule. And that is the lovely city of New York, where no matter how much people bitch and moan and complain about the prices of rents, no matter who moves in or out, the price keeps going higher and higher and higher. So it's come to such a point that people are actually proposing moving to an area of Manhattan not known so well to tourists, Roosevelt Island, which is the only place in Manhattan that's not above Harlem where the rent is below the average rent in Manhattan. So we're gonna go there and check it out and learn a little bit about its history. Let's go! So the only two bloody ways to get to Roosevelt Island are the tram and the F train. And both take forever. Hence why everybody hates going there. Classic. Now the reason that 4 minute, 5 minute shit happens, or is it 4 minute, 4 minute, whatever. So the reason why you wait so long, and then two trains come, and you're like, well why didn't one of these trains just come 10 minutes earlier? It's because New York's signal system for all the trains is from like the 1950s. And I guess that results in weird train delays and then waiting like 15 minutes for a train. And then the next train comes up like a minute later and it's like, all right, New York City, you're sucking up enough of our money. You can do a better job than this. So now you might ask, well, Dash, if you're complaining so much about this island, why would anybody come here? Well, the answer is because I'm a selfish prick. If I had friends here, I would do everything in my power to avoid coming here because of how little there is to actually do here and how quiet it is and how much of a pain it is to come here. But if you're someone who chooses to live here, there's a really good reason for it because you're gonna be paying some Jersey prices to live in what's technically Manhattan. So as of last night, the average rent for a roughly 700 square foot apartment in all of Manhattan is 4,300 bucks a month. If you go across the river to Jersey, the part of Jersey that's really close to Manhattan, like Jersey City area, the rent there is gonna be 3,300 a month for roughly 700 square foot apartment and if you come to Roosevelt Island the rent here is also about 3300 for that same roughly 700 square foot apartment literally in all of Manhattan the only places where you're gonna find comparable rents are Harlem and above and there's nothing wrong with those areas but they're pretty far away from central Manhattan and if you're somebody in your 20s or in 30s, you're probably going to be wanting to go out in like Midtown or Lower Manhattan or Brooklyn. And it's a headache to get down there from Upper Manhattan. Also from Roosevelt Island, but less so. Especially if you're just trying to get to Midtown, because then you're going to take the tram to Midtown East or the F. And then getting to Midtown is relatively easy from there. And we just happened to walk by an interesting place or well uh, I think it's an interesting place so I'll show it to you and we're gonna get into some history of this lovely island that I would never live on and this place is called the Blackwell house Whoa. now I don't know very much about this house and I didn't prepare to go over it. So I'll give you a little bit of history about the island and about why this is called the Blackwell House. Basically, Roosevelt Island used to be called 
Blackwell's Island because a family named Blackwell was basically the owner of this entire island for like a century. The island had several owners. It was first bought from Native American tribe by Dutch governor Van Twiller. Hopefully, I don't have that many Dutch viewers because I highly doubt I pronounced that correctly. Anyway, Van Twiller bought it from a Native American tribe in the early 1600s. And then it was in the Blackwell family from the early 1700s to the early 1800s. So as far as I know, they're basically the longest uh, owners of the island. There were some other owners like around there, uh, but none who were really that prominent. Now the Blackwells used it mostly for farming. And then in the 1820s, either 1823 or 1828, they sold the entire island to the city of New York for $32 thousand dollars which in today's money is worth like around 800 or 900 thousand dollars now apparently New York City prices were uh, a lot cheaper roughly not even two centuries ago because I feel like the average person in New York can't pay the rent for a week for eight hundred thousand dollars Now, after the government had bought the island, by around the 1920s, the island was renamed Welfare Island. And the reason was like, I mean, I think you can kind of imagine it. Like, a lot of hospitals were getting built. Asylums were being built. Uh, structures for people who were deemed incurables were built. You know, for example, in another video that I had made, I showed you guys the smallpox hospital, which was the first, maybe only, smallpox hospital in America, where basically if somebody had smallpox, they basically stuck you into that hospital and quarantined you. And then, last but not least, they also had a penitentiary here. So everybody knows of Rikers Island, another famous island owned by New York, where, you know, all sorts of infamous prisoners had been sent. Well, right here on Roosevelt Island, they used to hold all sorts of prisoners. I don't know any of their names because I don't hang out with them too often uh, or ever because they are all dead by now because there is no longer a penitentiary here, but there was. And it held all sorts of uh, bad hombres. But throughout the 20th century, a lot of these places started closing down. And so, in 1973, they renamed the island Roosevelt Island. And uh, much to the chagrin of Teddy Roosevelt, it was named after his dear old cousin, FDR. Now, the actual island is actually really small. It's only about 800 feet wide at its longest point and only about two miles long. And for you metric folk, that's about three and a half kilometers long. And there aren't that many residents here. It's only like about 15,000 people who actually live here. Uh, and it feels like it. Like you walk around here on the weekend, uh, there'll be some people around. But then you look right across the river into Manhattan and uh, I'm already seeing more people on the opposite side on the walkway walking than on this Deer Island. So you can kind of tell it's, uh, it's a lot quieter here. It doesn't feel Manhattan-y, although that could be your vibe for you folk who are thinking of moving to New York and you're like, oh shit! But it's so expensive. Where do I live? Oh, look at this area, Roosevelt Island. It's Manhattan. It's so much cheaper. Right nearby. Why don't I move here? 
Well, here's why. Because at the end of the day, you're basically gonna be like a Jersey folk. So, are you right nearby? Yes. But are you really feeling this city? No, you're really not. Um, it's like your own little private thing, but it's really quiet. There are very few restaurants around. Uh, there used to be a fire station on this island, but no longer is. So, good luck surviving if your house gets caught on fire. You can jump in the river, but good luck throwing your house in there. Well, or your apartment. And then the other thing is, uh, it's a hassle to get on and off. So if you're somebody who, you know, you like to get down, you're like, okay, Friday, Saturday night, gotta get the fuck out, I gotta party. Um, yeah, you're gonna have a headache, especially because the only train that comes here is the F, the lovely F. Uh, tint of sarcasm in my voice about the lovely F. The tram is cool, the tram is cool. Um, but still, it's gonna be taking a minute. But if you don't need to go out that much, if you live around Midtown or like Upper East Side and you don't mind going back and forth, might be the spot for you, but just don't say that I didn't warn you. You see, I don't think I've seen this many playgrounds in uh, literally all of Manhattan. I'm looking for the bars. Okay, so we made it to the northern part of the island. Let's see if we can get a look at the southern part before all the light goes away. Ah, oh, but man, I'm so hungry. I really could use a pizza right now. Oh, I'm in Manhattan. I could just go in you. Oh, wait. I can't. Ooh, ooh. Uh. So I was totally wrong about the tram and the subway being the only way that you can get to this place. You can definitely also take a bus and you can also swim. Oh my goodness! And we found the area where all of the restaurants on Roosevelt Island are. Ah, finally! At last, I have found the bar that I've been searching for. Now, right in front of us is the Roosevelt Island Tramway. And it looks real cool, but it looks crowded. Let's get a little closer. There's the actual tram cart. Okay, Roosevelt Island Tramway. Now the only problem is, as far as I know, I've never taken the tramway, but that only fits so many people, and that number of people is fewer than the number of people who take the subway. So let's see how many folks we got in here, and then you can decide for yourself which one to take, the metro or the tramway. Let's see. So here's our line. But I think people, those people are just trying to buy subway tickets. So, actually it's not so bad. We'll go a little farther south on the island and then maybe we'll uh, I'll take the tramway back.
Okay, now we are approaching the southern tip of Roosevelt Island and we are coming to the Franklin D. Roosevelt Four Freedoms State Park. So you can see the southern tip is pretty green. They did not construct any buildings here. Now a little note that the people who are living here are almost all living in resident uh, in rental buildings because there as far as I know there is like one condominium building and everything else is rental but to be honest after seeing Central Park Union Square Park Washington Square Park you can probably take this park to go and now if we keep walking we're gonna get to those same abandoned ruins that I hadn't previously made a video about. And the rest of this park is closed. So we are bouncing and I think we're gonna take the tram home. Hope you liked the video. See ya in the next one.